What's up everybody? Happy Friday, happy Friday. Uh, so on this episode, you're gonna get kind of a behind the scenes look in one of our company meetings. We do these bi-weekly and it's really special. We go through a book always. Uh, right now we're going through The Fourth Agreement uh, for the second time uh, because it's such an incredible book. If you haven't read The Fourth Agreement by, what is it, Don Miguel Ruiz, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely get that. Um, Huh, it's incredible. But in this, uh, in this clip that you're going to see, Joseph's talking about creating a very welcoming environment in the workplace. Uh, when we bring in guests, when we bring in family, when we bring in just random people, the postmen, uh, when they come in, uh, how to be welcoming and creating that culture to where when people leave, they are different from when they came in to our office. And there's a lot to be said for that. Um, I am extremely, extremely grateful for having such a visionary leader like Joseph uh, at the helm uh, of our business uh, here at our office in Greenville, South Carolina, because creating culture is something he does the best. And it's been incredible to see uh, kind of what that turns into from an individual employee employee standpoint and then when people come in and just catch the vibe of the business as a whole so definitely enjoy this uh, implement it in your daily life not only just personally with your interactions with others but within your business and see what happens I think you're gonna get a lot out of it so if we want to build there's that book good to great right if we want to build a great company that's one thing but most of the companies in that book, if you ever read that book, Good to Great, most of them are out of the game business. <laughs> it's kind of comical. Because great doesn't get it done. Change gets it done, right? And change, all change happens in the I'm going to die zone. Literally. Personally, it all starts personally. Personally, professionally. Because there's really no difference. Um, if you ever heard anybody say, well, this is just business? That, when I hear that, I go, they're about to screw me. And I'm going to take it personally. Because it's not just business. Everything's personal, right? Everything's personal. Because what? Because what am I? I'm a human. And you're a human. Just business, we'd be dealing with each other like robots. So, to take our company to legendary status, there's a lot of little things that you can do. And we haven't talked on this in a while, and um, and I wanted to bring it back up and practice it for just two minutes. Not all, but the way that we handle any person that walks into our offices. How we handle them. How we make them feel. Because our goal as a company is for they walk in one way and they walk out changed. Walk in one way, walk out changed. How are they going to embrace that change? How will that happen? Yes. By interacting with you. By interacting with me. By interacting with each one of you because you all... I, I once saw the Mr. Rogers movie, so, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Um, and I had no idea what a freaking superhero that dude was. No idea. No idea. Um, best movie ever. Best ever. Like, it's, it's, it is a great movie. Um, you know, it, it doesn't get as much publicity because it's not sensational and whatever. But <clears throat> he was so for teaching people how a single person is special. Every single person is special and they're unique. And, and one thing that you want to be able to convey to every single person you meet is that I love you exactly like you are right now. You ain't got to change. Like we're all about change, right? So this sounds like I'm telling you, sounds like I'm contradicting myself. But this is how we deal with because when you get involved, when you start changing like Tyler's been changing, like all of us, right? Like you're reading these books and you're changing. It almost irritates you when other people aren't there, right? It almost frustrates you with other people. You're like, what the hell is wrong with you? But see, the way that you let them know that it's okay to move further is to let them know they're okay right where they're at and that you love them right where they're at, that your love's not conditional. This may be a stranger that you meet. 
literally, I heard a guy talking years and years ago, and I bounce back to it a lot, and, and I try to remind myself of this. Every single time I meet somebody, every single time I'm talking to somebody, Nathan rounds the corner in the office. Yeah, man. Nathan rounds the corner in the office, and, and I see him for the first time of the day. I laugh. <laughs> Hulk Hogan rounds the corner in the office. <laughs> and he sees me. I am going to greet him. And, I'm, and because we're so close, I'll hug him. I know I got a hug, all right? But literally, in my eyes, behind my eyes, I am going, I love you. I love you. I'm not saying it out loud, but I am, I am exuding that. So when I look at it, before we talk to each other, and did you see the look I just had on my face? Because I literally said, I love you, behind my eyes. Like, that should be how we, how we deal with each other, and it should be how we deal with every single person that walks through the door. So what are some, some tactical things that we can do that we've talked about before, all right? Some of the tactical things we can do is a person walking through the office um, and you see Rebecca. Rebecca's the best at it. She's the best at it. I don't care who walks through our office. She picks her ass up out of her seat and comes out of her office. Comes out of her office and talks to her. I will be in the middle of a conversation with somebody and she'll see that somebody's here, even in the conference room. She'll be getting coffee and she's like, boom, she comes straight in there. Am I mad she interrupted? Hell no. What did she just do to that person? Yeah, Made cool. them feel special. They're going to walk out different than they walked in. Right? They're going to walk out different than they walked in because she conveyed love and relationship. That's the only thing that's going to heal everything around you. In fact, that might be the only thing that heals everything in you. <laughs> right? I was talking to somebody the other day about Jesus. I know, don't, don't you're all going to be struck by lightning. I actually was having this conversation. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to, like, I think of little weird stuff. Um, like, when Peter flipped out, you know, when the guards came and, and and they were grabbing Jesus and they were getting ready to haul his ass off, right? And Peter jumped up, pulled a sword out, chopped the guard's ear off. I mean, I think he was trying to kill him. The guard probably just shimmy to the shimmy to the right a little. Ear off on the ground. And Jesus was literally like, what, what did you do that for? He's doing his job. Like, I'm paraphrasing. I'm putting throwing the first Joseph's second opinion in there. But literally, I am certain that Jesus was like, my God, I just spent the last three and a half years with you, dumbass. Like, quit being so religious. My God. He picks up the dude's ear and he's like, man, sorry about that. <laughs> Dude, I know you're just doing your job. <laughs> and the guy goes, what the, what the? And I promise, and his ear's back on his head, healed and whole. Let me ask you, when he laid his head on his pillow that night, what was different about it? Everything was different about him. Because what? Because what, he had been touched by God? Because he had been healed? No way, probably for the first time in his life, he was introduced to a right relationship. And love. Does that make sense? Um, what's that? In spite of who he was or what he was sitting there to do. Yeah, it was his job. It was his job. He was raised in that. What is he going to not go do? What, what, what he was told to do? Or guess what happens? You... Die. And you know who else died? Your family. <laughs> they kill them all. So guess what? If they told me to go arrest Jesus, guess what? I'm coming to arrest him. I'm going to stab Peter first, though. I'm going to lose him here. You know? Like every single one of you would have done the same thing. Your spouse would be dead if you didn't. I mean, right? Give the man some latitude. So when people walk in our office, what are we going to do? Get up out of your seat. I don't care if they're in the middle of a conversation. You got to introduce yourself and greet them. Greet them. <clears throat> greet them. If you're on the phone, right? Because a lot of us will be on the phone. And you see somebody pass you by, you don't got to hang up on the person. Finish your phone call and come find them. Say, hey, I was on the phone, man. I want to come introduce myself. My name's Joseph. And they'll introduce themselves. It's been good to have you. Did you want a water, an energy drink, Coke, or coffee? <laughs> or, or, or healthy options. Yeah. You know, you don't get around the store for you. What do you need? 
Yeah, yeah. And, and here's the thing. Did I say, do you want something to drink? No. I just got to give him a bunch of options. Which one do you want? We want everybody wants some. You know what Tom Shea said last time he was here? Mm. It was such a testament to how awesome you guys are at this. He said, um, I heard Amanda saying, hey, do you want a drink or can I get you a water or something? He's like, I don't want a, I don't want a water, but I'm going to go ahead and take one so everybody stops asking me. Because I know I have to have one if I'm in this office. <laughs> we want people to feel that welcome, right? And if you've already met him and you know him like Tom Shea, Man, you stick your head out, stick your head out the door and say, Tom, it is good to see you again. Man, we're glad you're here. I promise you, is it going to be uncomfortable for you? Huh? And you know how much I care about you being uncomfortable? No. <laughs> Not at all. I'd rather you be uncomfortable. Can I add something? Yeah. This is quick. We should ask Tom Shea. He needs a spin cup. <laughs> yeah. You see, he's got a dip in his mouth every time he comes in. Like, Tom, you need something to drink, or do you need something to spin it? <laughs> and let me add something else, okay? So, a lot of it, I think the root is value, is our value in ourselves. Because when there was a really, like, a lot of times that I remember seeing somebody like Barney Gosnell, who is polished, suit, CPA looking, whatever guy. And I would look at somebody like that who had a, a solid career, and whatever. He, he ran at a different level than I projected my level was, that he was higher in some kind of <laughs> make-believe caste system that I was a part of. And it was all self-imposed. So my lack of greeting somebody like that was not out of um, rudeness at all. It was out of, I don't feel equal to somebody like that. And there's going to be people like that all the time in this office. And you are valuable. You make this company run. And you are every bit not more valuable than any person that would be in here, Tom Shea or Barney or whoever else it is. Um, so I don't know if that was just a mean thing, but I thought I'd share it. Love your neighbor as. I change that around a little bit and say it is impossible to love your neighbor unless you love yourself, aren't you? But does that make sense? So I don't care if it's Tyler. Tyler owns No Hook Media. He's a partner in Consolidate. I don't give a shit. Get up out of your seat. You're welcome. Somebody make a feel important. This isn't just for. This is a, like Kim was saying, this has nothing to do with hierarchy. If I'm in my seat, I better get up and go welcome somebody. The more responsibility you have, the more responsibility you have <laughs> to make people feel special. Right? Respect. Absolutely. <coughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> Change that verse around. Respect your neighbor as yourself. It says something too to like how good we have, we are at it you know, when, we're, when we're on point is that the male guy that we had he he retired and after his surgery he was supposed to come back and he came by here just to see people because he was like and we we he had only been our male guy for like half a year and he'd been and he retired so he'd been doing it for like thirty something years but he said there were five places that he had to go back to and we were at the top of the list. Aww, that's so, awesome. uh, you may say big difference. We had moved offices on him, so he was like, where's the, these people? <laughs> I mean, there, there's nothing better, and and Ricky doesn't see people a lot because of his frosty window, but there's nothing better than, um, than getting out of your seat. That is such a sign of respect. There's only one time recorded in the entire Bible when Jesus stood up out of his seat, where he was seated in heaven. You guys know what it was? Anybody? Kim knows she shaking her Was it when Stephen? Boom. Oh, when Stephen was martyred. Literally, he stood up and he was like, boy, that dude's bad for the bone. He stood up, it's out of respect. So that's why I talk about getting up out of your seat. Is to stay seated when somebody comes in is to say you're not important. That's what it says. 
not important. So what you're really saying is, I'm not important. Right? Feel you're important. Get out of your seat. Can make them feel important. That's just the way it works. So that's why when you learn to be a vessel, when you love yourself first, that means that you now become open and love can flow through you. When you forgive yourself first for whatever that we've done, you become a vessel and forgiveness flows through you. Does that make sense? It won't until you do. When, when, when you get rid of those that rejection, when you've been rejected your whole life in whatever time or whatever, however that happened, when you address that and you go back into that and you see it for what it is, and you go, huh, and you just observe it. That's the light, it comes in, it shines, the darkness flees, and you go, huh, you get a different perspective. It's a different perspective, and you come out of it, and you go, wow, so then you recognize it in other people. And you'll spend a little bit extra time with that person, let them know that they are loved just the way they are, exactly how they are. All their screw-ups and mishaps and whatever, they may be polished on the outside, right? They may look perfect on the outside. Dude, I can remember. You don't want me telling you something about it. So I can remember when Nathan was going through <laughs> Oh, my news dad. When he was going through a time where he was super depressed. He was super, super, super depressed. You remember this? Couldn't get him out of bed. He wouldn't get out of bed. He was just laying there. Crying. Couldn't get him out of bed. Jill, Jill couldn't get him out of bed. Nobody, none. I mean, it was bad. bad. Like, like we were worried he was going to kill himself. Was, you were super depressed. You remember that? Yeah. I figured you. You were thinking about it. Yeah. So, so literally, I had no idea what to do, but I know I had felt that way before, and I continually forgive myself and love myself through those situations. And I was like, it's the only thing I can do. And you may think this is freaky or weird, but what did I do? Put your hands on me. I crawled right up in bed and crawled on top of him and squeezed him. Do you remember that, Jill? Yeah, you were laying there with me. We were all in bed. I know it sounds weird. I mean, it's like, oh, <laughs> weird. Go. No, I, I didn't care because I, I, I could feel, I could feel the absolute despair on him. And I was like, God, I had felt that before. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to crawl inside this human pull him with me back out of this because I love him that much, right? So when you get to that place, you're able to do that. And he's had to be there for me in times like that. So that, because why? We're human, right? And love, light, drives out all that other stuff, right? So there's a, there's a, uh, uh, do we have, we don't have time to go through the rest of it because we're supposed to be in a little hour meeting, right? We have that now. I wish we had time to roll through everybody's but we'll keep doing it. Remember, if you didn't get to go this time, we'll do you first next time, right? Is that okay? Yeah. Because I want to hear from every single person. Anyway, I love y'all. That's awesome.